Voters in Durham will cast their ballot on a tax increase to fund mass changes in mass transit. We'll have information to help voters decide next on Black Issues Forum. Quality public television is made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV. Welcome to Black Issues Forum, I'm Mitchell Lewis. On the ballot for Durham County November 8th will be the option to vote for or against a half-cent sales tax that would help fund capital improvements and development in the mass transit system. The revenue collected would provide for bus service improvements, 37 miles of commuter rail between Durham, Research Triangle Park, and Raleigh, 12 light rail stations in Durham County alone, and more. But first, voters must decide. With growth in Durham expected to increase to 2.5 million people by 2035, advocates for the transit improvements say preparations have to be made now. But can taxpayers sustain the increase right now? We'll talk about the pros and cons with today's guests. I'd like to introduce Chuck Watts, a member of the North Carolina Board of Transportation, and Theodore Hicks, chairman of the Durham County Republican Party. And gentlemen, welcome to Black Issues Forum. Thank you. Thank you. Chuck, I'll start off with you. Tell us about the plan that uh, this proposal that is involving the one cent, the half cent sales tax as it relates to transportation. How will this impact residents of Durham? Well, um, literally, Mitch, this is going to be uh, Durham's opportunity to uh, step forward and say that mass transit is something we need more of. Uh, it's a half cent sales tax. Uh, it doesn't apply to most of the essential things that people buy. Um, it really uh, actually will replace <clears throat> uh, a sales tax that until this summer uh, already existed. So that if you look at the level of sales tax from today, uh, or if this, assuming this uh, referendum does pass until uh, going back for a year, you'd see actually a decrease in the overall sales tax. Uh, it's a minimal contribution that gets us started down a road to have more uh, mass transit. It will be augmented by uh, money from uh, the NCDOT and the federal uh, government that is currently we're paying as part of a, our taxes, um, but we don't get any benefit from because we don't have significant mass transit and, and, and rail in particular. So uh, the, the average person will pay uh, you know, less than $10 a month in tax uh, and could theoretically uh, eliminate the use of a car, which would save them roughly six or $7,000 a year, um, which is a great deal for us. And then when you look at it on a broader level and you think about what this area is liable to look at, look like once you uh, bring in as much population as we expect to see and have seen over the last few years, um, you see that it's a real necessity. Now, Ted, do you believe that this half-cent sales tax proposal is, is beneficial? The problem that we, the Republican Party in Durham has with the tax proposal now is that it's a sales tax. Um, it's the biggest problem that we have with it. The, the, we, what we don't have a problem with, we, we, we agree. I think Chuck and I could probably agree on a lot of things. There is clearly a problem uh, in transit in the Raleigh-Durham area. Uh, I was... Yeah, constantly humored by the fact that we have traffic reports at the beginning of the day and the end of the day and the congestion is the same place every day obviously there's an accident every once in a while somewhere else but it always gets reported after I've already found it um, the problem that we have with it is it's a sales tax um, and as Chuck was pointing out while it's going to kind of replace the tail the tax that was already there that was a statewide tax and now that's been removed but we're going to add it back. And the problem is that while the tax isn't going to apply to some of the essentials, like the groceries and the medicines and things of that nature, it ultimately is going to be taxed on uh, effectively shopping, if you think of it that way. And I, I'll use South Point as an example. South Point Mall is an example simply because that's where my family and I live. And if we're going to tax shoppers at South Point, 
uh, ultimately what that's going to do is drive shoppers to Cary or Raleigh or Chapel Hill perhaps, some of the surrounding communities. Uh, you know, for example, my wife, uh, I was joking with you earlier that, you know, my wife is kind of greeted the way Norm was greeted. When Norm would walk into Cheers, everybody, hey, Norm, that's how my wife is greeted when she walks into Jim Bree. We've got two beautiful girls, and she loves that store. But you know what? They've got one in Cary, and she can also shop online. So the, the problem is the continuation of if we do this, then what's next, and what's next? And so if we raise sales taxes, that's going to push shoppers away, which take sales away from the retailers, again, in South Point and other the Durham retailers. And when that happens, then you have less jobs. And in an economy like this, where we've got, uh, what, 9 or 10% unemployment throughout the state, and, you know, since we're, this is the black issues forum in the black community, it's a 15% unemployment. And when you break it down even further, the young black community has about a 45% unemployment rate the last time I looked at it. Now, uh, when you talk about the jobs that the young black individual is going to be looking for, you're typically talking about retail jobs. It's going to be, uh, you know, maybe the after school type of job or the, you know, between summer session or between semesters at uh, Central or at Duke or UNC or whatever. Those type of jobs would, would begin to dry up. There's going to be less of them available if we're taking sales from the Durham retailers and sending them over. So. The fact that the Durham Republican Party is against the tax doesn't mean that we're against solving the problems of mass transit. We clearly believe that there's a problem. We just don't believe that this is the way to solve it. Chuck, do you feel that this would have an adverse effect on, on the African-American community? Uh, no. In fact, I think it provides a, a huge benefit to the African-American community. As I was indicating to you, the amount of tax that, that people will pay is uh, pretty minimal, uh, and I, I would challenge most people to even know if they recognize that the, the sales tax went down uh, in July, um, and uh, a half cents increase would be five cents on a ten dollar purchase. It's uh, it's it's not material. Were it material, I think uh, Ted's point might be valid. Uh, the other point about it is that it's going to be a regional system. Uh, we're going to vote on this referendum. If it passes, it's not going to come into effect until w one of the partners in the other neighboring counties joins us, and presumably both counties will join us. So there won't be an opportunity to go uh, to, to carry. And, and I would defy anybody to think that in order to avoid a five cents on a $10 purchase, they would drive from South Point to carry. I mean, it's just not material. And, and Ted, one of the reasons why um, I guess those who are in favor of, of this tax increase, uh, they say that one of the reasons is because of the growing population in the triangle. Uh, do you see that as a, as a factor to, to go ahead and move forward with this pr pr proposal right now instead of waiting later? Again, what I, what I believe, what I would contend is that we need to move forward with a uh, a transportation plan, uh, I just don't believe that the, the solution is, in particular, light rail. Um, or And again, in the first three years of this plan, the proposal is that we're going to have expanded bus services. Well, I would again contend that the bus services that we have now are grossly underutilized. Now, do we need buses? Absolutely. Do we need light rail? I personally don't believe it is a viable solution. And the, there's an article or op-ed today written by uh, the, one of the Raleigh transit planners for you know, like 20 years. He was a Raleigh transit planner. And I think he was also uh, one of the trustees on the, um, the NCDOT. The point is that um, we believe a, a solution needs to be brought forward, but we don't think it should be done via sales tax. And the other problem, as Chuck was indicating, is the, the plan that is currently out there that we're voting on is we're assuming um, three big things. Number one, we're assuming the, the, the growth continues. The massive amounts of growth that we have seen is going to continue. I hope it does, but that's a very big assumption. Um, but let's put that one aside for a second. The two other assumptions that we really have a problem with is that we're assuming that the NCDOT is going to kick in some dollars, and we're assuming that the, I believe the federal dollars or federal money is going to come into this as well. And there is massive problems in the uh, balance sheets of both the state government as well as the federal government. And as we're seeing kind of across the country, the, the movement is towards we need to prioritize, we need to cut spending, we cannot continue as a nation, we cannot continue as a state 
to continue to spend more money than we bring in. And so the, the challenge that we have and the fear, okay, because again, we're not against solving the problem. Um, what we're, the, the problem that we have with it is that if we go down this road, but then we see some, perhaps some fiscal sanity restored in state and federal governments, do we, are, we're, we don't have the confidence that light rail and these types of projects would continue to get funded. Because the, the, the debate is always, well, what about Social Security and Medicare? You know, nobody wants to touch those things. And so it's the other luxuries or the not so essential items that would probably get cut. That would be the concern, is that it's just not going to. Uh, and then ultimately the Durham taxpayers get stuck paying for a system be, that we voted on and approved, but then the NCDOT and the federal government didn't kick in the dollars that we initially assumed were going to be there. That's part of the problem that we have with it. Chuck? Yeah, let me just add a, a couple of points to that. Uh, one is, I guess, the reference to the needs of, um, you know, unemployed and um, uh, low-income folks. Uh, they desperately need to be able to not have to drive a car. Absolutely. So I think we're together on the need to have greater mass transit in, uh, in our area. Our area is unique in the region when you look at it uh, because of, you know, the sort of multinodal aspect of Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, and the other municipalities in the area. So th th there's, a, there's a key need uh, for, for greater mass transit. And, I mean, I, I frankly think, I mean, you know, I, I understand your points, Ted, but um, it, it sounds to me like, you know, you see the need but don't want to see us pay for it. And this is an opportunity for our citizens to step up and say that we, w we want to have greater mass transit and therefore we're willing to pay an extra half cents uh, on sales tax to get it. Um, it's it's got to be paid for one way or the other. A lot of the tax and spend debate that you're talking about has to do not with investments in mass transit, but in more discretionary areas um, uh, and having to do with income tax. But the, the idea that we're going to have to have a public input, I mean, one of the main things that really government does, even from the most conservative standpoint, is education and transportation. Nobody privately is going to do that. Um, and so uh, our area will continue to grow. Uh, the growth rates have, have, have trended out pretty, pretty accurately. If you look and compare how devastating the, uh, this great recession has been on the nation, uh, this area has been touted as one of the places to uh, sort of ride out the recession. Uh, we're, liable to be, we're liable to see these forecasts. We're more liable to see these forecasts that project large amounts of people coming into this area um, be conservative rather than overestimates. And uh, this area has become more attractive as other areas have become more challenged by the, uh, the, the economic experience that we've, we've had in this country. So uh, this is a real opportunity for Durham to, to step out and say that uh, not only do we want it and we need it, as Ted even agrees, but we're willing to pay for it. Uh, we're willing to pay our portion of it. The federal and state money that, that, that Ted referred to is, is actually already coming from our gas tax, but it's not coming back to us because we don't have uh, the sort of mass transit services that would draw from those sources. Um, and the federal government's participation in mass transit and state's participation in mass transit, and I actually sit on the NCDOT board, has been solid, and they've reinforced it time and time again. So uh, there's certainly a current debate in Washington. Um, there's a lot of gridlock in Washington. It's hard to know uh, what's going to happen in Washington. Uh, I, I grant you that. But I, I would have to say that uh, this is, in the long run, going to be a, a, a small portion of our experience. And in the long run, um, our experience is going to probably look more like it has over the last 30 years, where federal and state government have participated in mass transit efforts that communities like ours have done. Well, I certainly like the fact that I, I heard Chuck say that they running conservative numbers. I love it when I, I'm hearing uh, him, he's going to be conservative. I love that. The, again, we are not, uh, we're, we're, we don't contend that the population is going to continue to grow. We want to see that happen. And again, we, we believe that there needs to be mass transit solutions. Um, what we would contend is, again, uh, just small empirical evidence. Just last night I was running errands. Again, I live near South Point Mall, um, and I saw three buses within a minute of each other, maybe two minutes if you factor in the stoplight, two data buses and one TTA bus, and not counting the drivers, it was a total of five people on the buses. And so 
our contention would be, we've got all these people coming. We certainly hope that continues. We need solutions. What about smaller van pools? Um, what about using the resources that we already have um, in a smarter, more efficient manner as opposed to, and you know, we're talking about a half cent sales tax, it's a 25% increase over what we currently have. Um, and while you're right, it is uh, minor when you think about it on a per transaction basis, but what you're gonna end up seeing is some of the other communities, they're going to start um, attracting. They're gonna try to take advantage of that and say, hey, if you come to this store in Jimboree over here, or if you come to this mall as opposed to that mall, you spend less money. Now, you know, it's often said that in marketing, it's not important what you do, it's what, what's important is what you think, what people think you do. And so if they're gonna, you know, market themselves that way, that you spend less of your dollars, here your dollar will go further in carry, while I would agree, you know, saving five cents or 10 cents isn't worth the gas money to get there, uh, but it doesn't mean that it wouldn't necessarily change um, the direction of those shoppers. And so again, if we've got South Point Mall, which is arguably, because again, the argument is to get people to work to try to eliminate the need for an individual to have a car. Well, if we're if I see three buses right around South Point Mall and they're very underutilized now, what it, why should I believe that we need to expand that? Now, I believe that we need to have better solutions, but they need to be more flexible solutions. So I would like to see uh, you know, smaller buses, maybe again the van pools, but you have more of them. Okay, they're going to be more flexible because right now the plan that is being proposed is effectively take a bus to the rail station, take the rail over to Raleigh or to RTP or wherever it is that you're going, and then you get off that bus or that off the train and you get back on a bus. Versus if we had just more agile, more flexible bus services or smaller buses and smaller van pools like the super shuttle that's been recently launched taking people to RTP. That is very flexible, but it's less expensive than taking a taxi cab. So again, it's not that we don't want or don't believe the, the population is going to come. It's not that we don't believe that we need a solution. It's just we don't have confidence that this is the way to solve it. I guess I would just respond to that by saying that this has been an ongoing debate, Ted, and um, for multiple years. Yep. Uh, this, project, this project has been worked through, has been publicly discussed. Um, this, uh, we've had forums all around the triangle. I've never seen the Republican Party show up at any of them and offer their ideas. So, you know, it, it sort of makes one wonder whether or not, you know, it's just they don't want to impose a tax. Sure. Um, I, I think the, the, the idea that uh, you look at today's bus system to figure out what's going to happen tomorrow is, is mm -hmm. obviously fallacious because if you had more service, if service was more, in my area, for example, uh, I couldn't walk to a bus line uh, in less than an hour. Right. And, and I live in Durham City. Right. Uh, so you can't, uh, you know, talk about a bus system that's as uh, limited as ours is. Um, you almost need to have park and ride to get to the buses. And well, that, and so we're hopeful, hopeful and expect that, the, and, and you mentioned that you like to see the numbers be conservative. I would just point out to you that the numbers are very conservative in these projections, but there's a risk to that. Sure. Um, what if the population is a lot greater coming here? Um, the other point is that if you look at um, uh, our area, and this is a broader question having to do with how our area develops, these flexible systems that you're talking about um, tend not to impact development. And so people contend, continue to sprawl out in uh, cul-de-sac after cul-de-sac. Uh, Raleigh was actually called, and we, this area gets plenty of positive accolades, but Raleigh was called Sprawly and, <laughs> uh, by one of the evaluators. There's another um, thing that I was concerned about, and that's that uh, there was a study done that showed that it was called Dangerous by Design and talked about how our, in, in the sort of growing southern cities, um, they're dangerous for pe pedestrians. And in the black community, we tend to have to walk and uh, catch the bus. And I'd like to see uh, more dense development uh, occur, and I think it would occur around fixed rail uh, and could be supported by bus. And, you know, some people who live in the rural areas say, well, that's not going to benefit me. Sure. Well, the truth is it will benefit them. It will allow them to maintain the, st the style of life that they chose when they moved here rather than, and sometimes we see this where 
development is expanding out, when they're building schools and whatnot out in the rural parts of the county, people get concerned because uh, they wanted to live in a rural area and they don't want all those cars. Well, if we had more density in the city part, uh, you could have, uh, you could retain the type of lifestyle that you chose in our area. So my point is, is that people will come unless this place becomes synonymous with the traffic problems in Atlanta yeah. and so forth, at which time uh, they won't go. Yeah. And so we will have missed the opportunity. Well, I think at the same token, Chuck, your point about, I mean, you live in Durham City and it would take you, you know, just under an hour to get to a, a bus stop. I mean, that's you know, how long would it take you to get to the light rail stop? I mean, that the 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 way that I well, have the bus system uh, would actually have a line that I could could walk to. OK. And the, the rail line would be. There. Now, once again, the rail line portion of this is pr pretty far out. I mean, we're talking 2024. Um, um, you know, imagine what Durham looked like in 1999. Yeah, right. I mean, downtown Durham. Yeah, totally different. Town. Yeah, right. Uh, so in a decade, uh, things will change. Sure. And uh, we believe that this this sort of planning would help it change in the right ways that would be ecologically uh, better, uh, uh, more efficient. The other question that you we at uh, Triangle Transit have seen uh, ridership peak. I mean, we're over. 6,000 riders, um, which was a rarity in the past. Um, and, uh, and it tends to bounce uh, with gas prices. Sure. Now, one thing we know for sure is that by 2020, you probably see gas prices in $5 range. Oh, absolutely. Well, with a $5 gas, right, <laughs> uh, gas cost, the, the, the savings that I described earlier, I mean, maintaining and driving a car will probably cost you $10,000 a year. Uh, all of a sudden, rail makes a whole lot of sense. And this is the sort of planning that's been going on, and, you know, it'd be helpful for you guys to be involved in it all sure. along the way. But at this point, the legislature that passed uh, this uh, bill that allows us to have it was actually sponsored in part by Republicans. Sure. So we don't see it as a, um, a political issue in the sense of this sort of um, dogmatic mindset yeah. that yeah. we see around it. This is a pragmatic thing. Uh, mass transit uh, helps people get where they need to go. And some f people ride it, some people don't ride it, but to the extent people do ride it, it reduces the demand on the roads. We have a chart, we call it the tomato can um, map. A tomato can map? It shows, <laughs> right, it shows uh, congestion. And if you look at our area, there's certain areas that already are congested. But you project out 20 years and almost every major artery is congested, yeah. and it looks like a tomato can. Well, gentlemen, we're, we're coming up. Actually, I've, I've been enjoying this because I've had to ask fewer questions during this particular program, but I just wanted to make sure be before we leave, I wanted to get both of your sides as to why do you feel voters should vote for or against the half cent increase towards mass transit. And I'll start off with you, Chuck. Well, I think it's a great opportunity for Durham to um, step out and show leadership in the triangle. There's many levels on which I think this is a, a very positive opportunity for Durham voters um, to say that we are willing to pay a little more sales tax in order to have a lot more uh, mass transit and to, um, to see a future for Durham that um, could anticipate uh, uh, mass transit that would support more dense living uh, anticipating the concerns associated with increased gas costs and increased uh, global warming. Um, all, all of these are, are reasons to, to, for us to make the statement that we're willing to, to contribute uh, five cents on a $10 purchase. Ted? Uh, I, the reason I would encourage the voters to vote against it is simply because the concern that we have is that it's going to be more damaging to the economy than helpful to the solution to the problem. Again, we believe that we have a problem, we just don't believe that this is the, sol the way to solve it. Um, we believe that a higher sales tax in our county is going to drive shoppers to other counties. Uh, and when you drive shoppers away, you drive 
uh, traffic away from the retail stores. Retail stores don't have the traffic. They're not going to have the jobs. And in an economy like this, where we've got 9% unemployment statewide, we've got a 15% unemployment in the black community, and a 45% or 50% unemployment rate in the young black community, to drive away jobs into other cities doesn't seem to be a good time to do that. Well, gentlemen, I thank you for both of your insights, and I, and I thank you for your civility on both on all these occasions, and I guess now it's in the hands of the voters. Uh, once again, I would like to thank Chuck Watts and Theodore Hicks for joining us. For more information or to get in touch with today's guests, visit us online at unctv.org slash BIF. You'll find links to email us your comments and join us as fans of Biff on Facebook. Or you can call us on the Biff line at 919-549-7167. Be sure to meet us right back here each Sunday afternoon at 430. For Black Issues Forum, I'm Mitchell Lewis. Thank you for joining us. Quality Public Television is made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV.